All Alabama Gardener. We're talking about growing yellow crookneck squash. Now I want to give you a, a heads up on this video because it's a little bit longer than uh, my videos usually are. But the reason for that is because I'm presenting a whole lot of information. In this video, I show you not only how to plant and grow squash, but I show you two ways to cook it. And then I show you what I think is the best way to freeze squash for uh, longer term storage. First thing we gotta do is plant the seeds. That I'm putting in the pot is triple 13 fertilizer. The second white material is azomite. And here you get to see a soil block with the roots of the plant coming out the sides of it. Today I'm going to be planting squash. So here's one of the plants. So all I got to do is set it out. It's in a gallon pot. It's already blooming. This thing is wanting to grow, so I got to get it in the ground. I like straight rows, so I'm using a string to uh, mark off my straight row here. Now I'm laying my ruler in the trench and placing a mark or a cross mark at four foot intervals. That's a beautiful row of green onions there on my left side, isn't it? Okay, now I'm going down each side and I'm going to take out one shovel scoop of dirt and come back on the other side and do the same thing to uh, create the hole for the plant. Here are the fertilizers I'm going to use. The red bucket is compost. The orange bucket is earthworm castings. The white the granular powder is triple 13 and the white powder is a mix I mix up of organic fertilizers. And we got some tri uh, azomite to go in each hole. First, I'm going to add a big handful of compost, a big handful of earthworm castings, some triple 13, some azomite, and some organic fertilizer. And mix that all around in the bottom of the hole and set a plant in there and pull the dirt in around it. I'm also going to add a top dressing of all of the same fertilizers around the top of the ground. And then you want to pull some dirt over the top of that. In other words, cover it up good. Now let's get the rest of this row done. Now it's time to start picking. So here we have some beautiful squash. I'm going to slice them about a half inch thick because the thicker they are, the more squash flavor you get with each bite. Now this cornmeal that I'm using is a muffin mix, but you can use this plain cornmeal. Now I'll put the recipe in the description box below, but uh, it's going to start with a half a cup of the cornmeal and a quarter of a cup of plain all-purpose flour and you might want to add a little bit of salt if that's what you want. Shake up your flour cornmeal mixture real good and add all your squash slices. And then shake that up again to get all your squash slices coated with the flour cornmeal mixture. 
and I put enough oil in my skillet to pretty much cover the bottom. Now I'm going to add the squash in multiple layers. It's not going to be just one single layer. As it begins cooking, you want to use a spatula and just kind of turn it over to try to get as many pieces as you can uh, kind of browned up a little bit. Okay, the squash is cooked. I'm going to put it in a casserole dish and cool it down in the refrigerator and then it's going into the freezer. I'm putting this in the refrigerator to cool it a little bit because I don't want to put that hot dish directly into the freezer. Now the question always becomes, what do you do with some squash that's gotten just a little bit larger than the ideal size for frying as I just showed you. Because the seed in this squash is a little bit large, I've taken a spoon and scraped them out. And instead of cutting it crosswise, I'm actually going to split it lengthwise, and then I'll cut these pieces in half crosswise. I have just a little bit of flour seasoned with a little bit of salt, in this bag and I'm going to coat the squash strips in it. And then I have a light tempura batter of flour, water, cornstarch, and a little bit of salt and we're going to coat the squash slices in that. No, my skill is not dirty. That's just where I fried that squash earlier in this video. Now our tempura style squash slices are nice and brown, so we're going to take them out and lay them on a little paper towel to drain a little bit. Very good. So there's no need to throw away your squash that's gotten just a little bit larger than what you really would like. I'm going to divide it into four pieces so that when I freeze it, it will be easy to separate. Now I'm going to put it in the freezer for overnight. So here's our frozen squash. It's been frozen overnight and I'm going to put some in a freezer bag for long-term storage and we're also going to cook one piece of it to see how it tastes. The main reason for pre-cooking the squash is to kill the enzymes so that they don't develop a freezer taste. Now watch the bag collapse as I pull a vacuum on it and, and pull out as much air as I possibly can. Now let's warm up one of the pieces that we froze overnight and give it a taste test.
That's pretty good. Actually, it's better than I expected it was going to be. So this is a way to preserve squash uh, for the winter during the summer when you have lots of it. You know, I wish I could share it with you, but we just can't do it through the YouTube. Yep, very good.